today I'd like to talk about um, something which is not commonly associated with with psychotherapy except within uh, certain certain circles and uh, it seemed like perhaps 10 20 years ago that the notion of integrating the body with psychotherapy would be coming more and more commonplace but actually it seems like it's been lagging behind uh, back maybe 20 years ago bioenergetics was entering the scene um, which had evolved from the work of Wilhelm Reich. Reich was one of the first European psychotherapists to recognize the connection between the body and the emotional experience and working with the body in ways to affect emotional release was what he was a pioneer in. And uh, two of his students, Flowen and Paracos, went on to form bioenergetics which was even a more body-centered approach to diagnosing and also releasing trapped feelings. It was still recognized that trapped feelings, trapped emotions, unreleased, suppressed emotions were the major subject, the major focus of what the therapy was doing. But working with the body actively was uh, suggested, proposed as a way to actually release the, these feelings. Now how this all comes about and why it's so important, I believe, to uh, working on yourself in any kind of psychotherapy program or spiritual program is because we know that the major problem in therapy is releasing trapped emotions. But we also have learned both from Reich's work and also from the Eastern teachings that when emotional energy gets suppressed, sometime in the past, that this emotional energy then gets stored in what we could call the psychic physical continuum. There's a meshing of the psychic body and the physical body. For practical purposes, while, while we are now living on the earth plane, we can assume that this energy that gets suppressed is stored in the physical body and working with the physical body in ways, in certain ways, can actually release these trapped emotional feelings sometimes in, uh, sometimes surprisingly quickly even with people who may have, for example, had a, had a lot of therapy but it's been the intellectual type, it's been not working with the body they could start working with the body in some kind of appropriate way, intelligent way and they can experience a lot of emotional release immediately. It's that working with the body um, in such a way as when you understand that what you're working towards is emotional integration and release. That understanding is in itself very necessary in order to encourage the emotional release. But once you, once you have that expectation, then the emotional release can be really significant. Uh, another thing about the body and why the body is a, such an important approach to the emotions and even to what you could call the spiritual experience is that the feelings originate in the body. The, the body and the psychic body is where the chakras are contained. The chakras are the eastern uh, designation for the energy centers. Uh, the, the centers of consciousness, and there's usually described as seven major centers of consciousness, and they're spaced physically in the body, ranging from the base of the spine to the top of the head. And each of these centers controls a different area of experience, and uh, accordingly a different emotion. But the important thing about the body is that as you go into the body, you realize more and more that the emotions uh, usually originating from the chakras, the emotions are happening in the body. That it's not a mental or a thinking experience. And it becomes even clearer that there is a very definitely a distinction between thoughts and feelings. Thoughts are mental and feelings are um, of the body. You could even say physical.
emotions are of the body. You could even say um, physically, uh, physically placed. Now, an important distinction between thinking and feeling, between thinking and emotions, is that the emotions being of the body always have the property of being in the moment because the body, the physical body, is always in the moment. The body connects to the world around us in really a kind of primitive way, a way of being exactly in the moment, not being susceptible to the enticements and we could say entrancements that the mind does. The mind, which is the, the home of the thoughts, the longings, the plans, the mind is always usually in the present, excuse me, in the future or in the past. The mind is never in the present. So when we're wrapped up in our mind, we tend to be not in the moment. That's why the emphasis has been, on the, been in the past on dropping the activity of the mind, coming into the moment, and then getting more in touch with the body, which is always in the moment. So if you understand that, you can see that dropping the thoughts, just sitting quietly, for example, uh, as a preliminary to doing some kind of emotional work on yourself, sitting quietly, letting the thoughts just calm down, and then have the awareness that you're entering into the body. You're coming into a body experience. And just the focusing on your body, the, even the appreciation of your body, the, the awakening to body sensitivity to what's happening in your body, can be a, a really vast and glorious kind of experience. But it's also the home of the suppressed emotions, which are the focus for the work that's done in psychotherapy or self-therapy. Now, aside from just sitting quietly and going into the body um, and approaching the awareness of the emotions through body awareness, there are very specific things you can do to work with the body to uh, enhance and to encourage the emotional release, as I was saying before. Now, it's, um, it's significant, I guess, that there are only certain types of body work, working with the body in certain ways, that really encourage the emotional release. Exercise in general does not bring us into a feeling experience with our body. Uh, at, least, at least it doesn't relatively compared to the experience that we could have when we use the ways that really bring us into our body. The ways that bring us into our body most powerfully are yoga, stretching, basic simple stretching, and massage. Uh, those are the two primary ways. Yoga has the, the characteristic of stretching the muscles, of working the spine, and this is where we're tying in heavily to the Eastern component of the approach that we use. But if you have some experience with yoga, and most people do, you know that you can do a yoga session and really relax yourself quite quickly. But what's not generally realized is that the same process that's occurring that relaxes you is also uh, going to keep working on you and keep releasing those really deeply held suppressed feelings. So if you approach a yoga practice with this in mind, with just opening to yourself on a body level, working with the yoga in very quiet ways, opening more and more to feelings. If you, if you do this um, with this particular, uh, particular thing in mind, you'll see that even after only a few weeks or maybe a month, you're going to start noticing a really definite change in your emotional experience because feelings are going to start coming up for uh, processing at that point, feelings which have been previously suppressed. Another important way is massage, which is a passive way, but working with the muscles as well as stretching them out, the manipulation of the muscles really facilitates emotional release, and many people, um, body workers especially, 
are very familiar with the fact that many of their clients on the massage table have, uh, it's very common to have emotional releases on the massage, massage table. This is what bioenergetics tied into when they started working with the body. They realized that by putting the body in certain positions, they could stimulate emotional release. And this was very effective, but if you compare, if you compare the um, benefits and the basic sophistication that's present in a yoga routine, you'll find that it's much greater than what Western psychology has arrived at so far in terms of the different positions, the postures, the way they work on the chakras, and the kinds, kinds of emotional releases you can have. So I encourage uh, my clients, the people I'm working with, or else the people um, who are watching the show, to try to get in involved in some kind of physical routine. Yoga and massage are the best, but next to that, probably any, anything which is increasing body sensitivity. Tai Chi is probably very good, although I have no personal experience with that. Um, there are other things like Feldenkrais, a very sensitive, deliberate kind of increasing of body sensitivity, which would also bring you into the emotions and tend to release feelings. That would be good. Any kind of body discipline, but not an aerobic or a, an exercise-oriented discipline. Um, that does not relate to, to emotional release through the body work. And even, it's, it's even, I believe it's even incorrect to think of yoga as exercise. I think of it more as uh, a kind of a meditation. Now the other way that, the other physical discipline that really can um, have an effect on the emotions is working with the breath. And again, that's what uh, yoga has really demonstrated through the centuries that it has a very sophisticated knowledge of. There are many different kinds of breaths in yoga, but just working with the breath in the most simple way can do a lot to begin the process of emotional release. And what happens with, with the breath when you're, when you're using the breath is that usually you're just sitting quietly. You, it's important to sit with your back, uh, with your spine straight, so that you're not leaning back, that you're balanced uh, delicately on your, um, on your sit bones, either sitting on a chair or, if you can, sit cross-legged on the ground. And then bringing in the breath very slowly. And the traditional yoga breath is to start inhaling in the navel area, as low as you can go, and then in and then fill up the solar plexus area, and then fill up the, <clears throat> the upper chest area, and then to release the breath in the, same, in the reverse sequence, collapsing the chest first, and then collapsing the mid-chest, and then collapsing the uh, navel area. Now, when you breathe like this, filling up in this way, and then releasing the breath in this way very slowly, what, what's usually common is that you'll find that certain areas of your body it's very hard for you to breathe into and to expand those areas of your body. You'll find, usually you'll find that certain areas uh, would vibrate, would tremble. You may just have no sensation in those areas. Um, it just may just be uncomfortable in those areas. You may feel some kind of minor discomfort. Wherever you feel that kind of discomfort or inability to breathe into an area of your body, that signifies that the chakra in that part of the body is blocked. And that, what I mean by blocked is that you have conditioned yourself to turn away from, to push into the subconscious, the feelings that correspond, in, that correspond with that particular chakra. So as you try to do the breath, wherever you encounter a difficult place, let's say you just can't breathe into your navel area, or you can't push the breath way down so that you're expanding your lower abdomen uh, just on top of your uh, pubic bone, let's say. That means that the second chakra has some blocking, the third chakra is the solar plexus might have some, some blocking, the fourth chakra corresponds to the heart area. There could be blocking in, in those areas. So what's important to realize is that that's where you need the work. 
you need to sit quietly and to develop the breath in those particular areas of your body where you're having difficulty breathing into right now. And many times um, with a client, I'll, I'll bring a client into a session and we'll, we'll do the simplest things in terms of just working with the breath, just taking very slow yoga best breaths, very full breaths. And that may be all that's needed aside from just some simple relaxation techniques to bring a client into a catharsis. Because working with the breath, taking full breaths, is something that we don't do when we're constricted and suppressed. We tend to keep our breath very shallow, very kind of guarded. We're not taking in much energy through the breath. We're living sort of um, energy deficient. And this contributes a lot to chronic depression um, and chronic energy, uh, lack of energy. But you can breathe into your body, expand those parts of your body, and uh, have the experience for yourself. See what I mean? It may feel difficult at first. It may feel um, challenging even to breathe into those parts of your body. But if you keep doing it very gently, and if you're looking in the direction of experiencing an emotional release, it's very likely that you'll have the experience of feelings starting to get loosened up by working with the breath. So these are the three ways that I recommend people work with the body. Um, massage or even self-massage, um, yoga, and breath work. That's all you really need to start bringing you into the body, into the powerful experience that can result from integrating a body approach with a psychotherapy approach. Coming into the body more and more. As you do that, you'll also experience that just the cultivation of feeling, just coming into the body and cultivating your feeling sense, which means opening to all kinds of feelings that are in your body, not only emotional feelings, but starting with physical feelings. A physical feeling, for example, would be the feeling of, of being tired. A physiological uh, correspondence to that might be that you're, being that you're feeling depressed. So these feelings tie into each other very quickly. There's a merging between them. If you start opening up to a physical feeling, a physical sensation in your body that's always going to tie into an emotional feeling. And some of the Eastern meditation practices, for example, Vipassana meditation, the main practice is just sitting quietly and focusing on the body, watching the feelings in the body and experiencing both the physical sensations and the emotional, the connected emotional sensations that come up. And it's important to realize that because there's a connection between the physical and the emotional, that as the, as the emotional energy gets locked and stored in the body, it starts building up and it contributes to what we call what we recognize as physical disease. And this is, this is an area that um, Western medicine is just on the verge of realizing. This is, but, it, but it's something that's been realized by the, the people, the masters of the East for centuries, that the suppression, the buildup of the emotional energy, the feeling energy, is what results in physical disease, physical symptoms. So, conversely, when physical symptoms reach the point where they're really becoming symptoms, that what that means is that the energy, the, the, the emotional energy, has built up to the point where it's trying to release itself spontaneously through the body. And that's when we experience symptoms. So, the holistic approach or the homeopathic approach to working with physical 
disease is to allow the natural course of the experience of the physical disease experience to take place to let symptoms run their course understanding that it's a release in progress and that and that it represents a major clearing of what's been suppressed and trapped in the body. Now there's much more to working with the physical in terms of disease and we can discuss that on a different show but for now I just want you to realize that the physical and the physical disease is a manifestation of the emotional and that also when you're working with the with a disease that that's also the time when there's going to be a lot of emotional stuff coming up for you to work with, for you to clear in some way. If you, if you are sick, it's also a time when emotional stuff is going to be coming up. So that's another important time when you need an approach to work on yourself, to handle those feelings properly so that they just don't become resuppressed and so that the whole cleansing process that you're involved in is wasted. So we have uh, a few more minutes of the show, I'd like you to just experiment with going into your body in what may be a new way for you. It's a way of just becoming sensitive to the feelings in your body. So you may want to sit upright um, without leaning back just for a few minutes. This enables the energy currents to move around the body much more easily and promotes body awareness. So. Uh, if you feel like it, you can close your eyes and just focus your attention into your body, understanding that you're doing this in order to become ultimately more in touch with your emotional self, that the body will lead to the emotions and to the trapped and suppressed emotions in particular. So start taking some breaths, just very smooth breaths as best you know how at this point. Be very conscious of the breath coming in, going out, of the energy coming in with the breath. And you can visualize the energy of the breath coming into the body, especially any part of the body where you may have a chronic condition. A chronic condition in any part of the body represents a suppressed emotional trauma in that part of the body. That's always the case. So if you just bring your attention to that part of the body, whether it's a chronic back problem or anything else, actually in any part of the body, bring your attention to that body, into that part of the body, just like in the Vipassana meditation, just focusing on that part of, the, that part of your body, feeling what's happening, opening yourself to the feeling without judgment, or condemnation or the desire to avoid the experience completely accepting the physical experience that's what brings you into the moment as you move into a position of acceptance you move out of the activity of the mind you move into a place where the mind is accepting um, and stopping its activity and that enables you to go deeper into the feeling nature, into the body. So just keep watching those feelings in the body, opening to them in a very gentle way. And then when you're ready, you can just bring yourself back into the room. That's the approach you can use after the show's over. You can continue doing that if you want to. Uh, and don't be afraid that you're going too far too fast. Be very gentle with yourself. And I'll uh, see you next time.